Hi guys! So today's video is about my birth vlog, so if you want to know how it all went, then stick around and you shall find out. Okay, so it's Monday morning and we are headed off to the hospital to have our baby. So it's, um, oh God, it's um, six, what's the time? 6.41 um, and we're supposed to get there for 7.15 though um, since Ross likes being early for everything um, we're having to leave the house a lot earlier so um, yeah it's just uh, I had a decent night's sleep the only th I'm not allowed to eat anything so the only thing I was allowed to have was these tablets that they gave me so one was um, I had to take last night at around 10 o'clock and it had it's supposed to like help with um, like sickness so I've been getting, um, over the last four weeks, I've been feeling really nauseous first thing in the morning and sometimes it does end up in me being um, physically sick. Um, so I was actually quite grateful that they gave me this um, tablets to help with the nausea because apparently um, when you're under local anaesthetic or anaesthetic or you know, whatever medicines they give you, um, it can cause you to vomit. So they kind of want to um, prevent that. So you take one tablet um, last night at 10 o'clock and then I had to take another one um, before the operation and then um, there's another so basically you take two um, and they're different medicines so that's the only thing I've really had and I am actually starving so um, yeah I guess I'll just have to manage <laughs> So we've sorted out our parking and um, we're just walking to the um, hospital now. I suppose one thing I'm kind of, um, I wish I had managed to do is sort out my hair. I wanted to get some braids, but um, I just didn't have the time because I was working right up until, um, well today, like Friday was my last day, it's now Monday. Um, so I'll just have to manage with this hair as it is. And then I'm thinking after the baby, uh, I mean, when am I going to find the time to sit in a salon for six hours to get my hair braided? So I guess um, we're stuck with this for a little while. But uh, yeah, let's wait till we get in. There's three of us in this um, waiting room, or like, I don't know what this room is called, but there's three of us. Um, and we're going to be going first. So it's exciting, but you know, nerve wracking at the same time. So I guess I'll see you on the outside. How are you feeling, Ross? All right, not too bad. <laughs> you nervous? <laughs> yeah, right. After that last picture we took, we were then wheeled into the operating theatre where there were a whole bunch of people that I'd never seen before. There were two people that I had seen before. One was the anaesthetist and the other one was um, the, the surgeon. So I'd met them um, prior 
and um, and then there were a whole bunch of other people that I'd never seen before. So like midwives, um, some other doctors, and a pediatrician, just basically a lot of people. Um, and so once we go in, <laughs> um, I just remember that Ross was like pretty terrible. He just doesn't like being in hospitals. He doesn't like blood, he doesn't like needles. He just doesn't like any of it. Um, and so prior to that, he'd been trying to sort of like psych himself up so that, you know, he could provide me with support. Um, Meanwhile, I'm not even thinking about him because all I'm thinking about is one, my fear of having, having an epidural, which I did not want. Um, and the reason I was having uh, a C-section in the first place was because um, I had a low-lying placenta. So if you imagine your womb is kind of like this and uh, most people's placenta is kind of like sitting somewhere around here. And um, so this is the exit where your baby would come out. And unfortunately for me, my placenta was kind of like around here. And the doctors had said that it's too dangerous to allow me to deliver naturally because it would lead to lots of bleeding and the placenta would be the first thing that would um, be delivered first, which needs to continue to support the baby until the baby actually takes its first breath. And so I was terrified of having a, a C-section, not only because of the complications, because it is major abdominal surgery, but also I didn't want to have an epidural because I was frightened that, you know, I might be the one in one million people who doesn't recover from the epidural and might not be able to walk again. I, I honestly, I just have these morbid thoughts all the time. And so I was really terrified. So when the anaesthetist was telling me to, well, basically the anaesthetist will numb your back with an injection and that injection is supposed to make sure that you don't feel anything when the uh, anaesthetist then threads a really really fine sort of needle is it a needle i don't know some like a really fine thread almost needle like thing um through your back when that goes through your back um the uh that's where they thread through the medicine into your back to basically numb your legs. So they initially numbed the area around my back where they were going to make, where they were going to put the um, epidural in. And um, she would said that make sure you, I tell her that if I felt anything. And because I was so terrified of this epidural, anything that I felt, like even the tiniest thing, because normally I'm not a, I'm not a baby about these type of things. You know, I'm pretty good with needles and hospitals and all the rest of that sort of stuff. But in this instance, you know, I was like, anything that I felt, I was like, I can feel something. I can feel something. Stop. Everybody stop. You know, so they, <laughs> I was not taking any chances at all. Um, so, you know, they were very patient and, you know, they eventually managed to thread through the, um, <laughs> the medicine <laughs> and numb my legs. Um, and yeah, it's a weird sensation to actually have your legs numb. Like you're trying to move them, but you actually can't. Um, anyway, so once that's um, in, Oh, bless you, sweetie. Uh, once that's in, um, they then put you onto the bed and then they tilt the bed. So the bed will normally be lying flat like that. And then they tilt the bed like this um, so that they can uh, monitor and administer, um, and make sure that basically your legs are completely numb by spraying this like really cold um, liquid along your back. And um, basically you're not supposed to feel it beyond your, your waist, essentially. Um, so the further up they go up your back, the more you're supposed to feel cold of this, um, this, this water spray, I think it is. Anywho, so once that was done, um, then I was then told, okay, time for, you know, delivering the baby. And uh, they, uh, you know, put up a, a screen between me and the um, surgeons and their operation and um as i was sort of looking up i realized that i could see everything that was happening because above me was this kind of um surface this sort of like white metallic surface which i guess is kind of similar to like you know uh, so i have a um, high gloss um kitchen cabinets and it's similar to that so if you imagine that you've got all this light reflected from you know the where the surgeons are working and the surgeons are um, you know, the light is then reflecting everything upwards. You could see everything that was happening. So um, I was, you know, a little bit sort of taken aback that I could see everything, but I was still watching. And then I kind of looked away once I saw them make the incision and saw all the blood coming out and then saw them sort of suctioning away all the blood. So I looked away then. And then after, like shortly afterwards, they were like, here's your baby. I was like, oh my God. You know, I didn't, and the thing is, I had been frightened my entire pregnancy of something going wrong. So really, all I was concerned about was just hearing her cry 
it was literally the sweetest sound hearing her cry because I was, it was like you were holding your breath. You know when they say waiting to exhale, I was literally waiting to exhale. Um, and so, you know, I finally heard her cry and it was the sweetest sound ever. And then obviously I burst into tears. Um, and then I was like, okay, so why? And they handed me my baby. And I said to Ross, what are they doing with her? And he was like, oh, they're weighing her. They're doing this, they're doing that. And then eventually they brought her over and there she was. And yeah, so anyway, when they first lifted her up after she'd cried, I was like, oh, thank God. And when they like showed her to me, she was like all blue and gray. <laughs> like why is she that color um as if i'd never seen any child being born before not you know i knew that children don't have or babies don't have all their pigmentation when they're born but <laughs> i think because in my mind i'd never thought about what she looked like it was like my whole focus in the entire pregnancy was just to deliver her safely and that she was breathing that was all i was thinking about i didn't care what she looked like whether she looked like me whether she looked like her dad whether she looked like her grandparents or whatever i was simply just concerned that she was going to be okay so when they handed her to me and you know she was like gray like blue like blue gray and gray i was like um yeah so anyway so afterwards they handed her to me we get wheeled back to the ward where we were um uh, originally um, placed when we first got there and um, they did some observations on uh, both me and the baby and uh, we took a couple of more pictures and then we then get um, taken to the ward area where I'd um, wanted to be um, placed which was uh, the sort of private um, ward and uh, then my parents came. I was generally in a daze and I didn't even think to record anything so basically all these pictures that you're seeing are the ones that my sister took when she arrived and um, I was just so overwhelmed by the whole thing. It was like I was a spectator at the birth of my own child, you know, I, like it hadn't happened to me. Yeah, I just, I just didn't even think to do any like video or anything. Like I just, my mind just was like, <laughs> yeah, just generally in a daze and I couldn't think. Um, and I was just exhausted as well. And I don't know why. I mean, I guess it was partly from the, um, from the epidural, although it's not like the sleep inducing um, epidural because you're supposed to be awake the entire time. Um, Anyway, so the nurses were really helpful and they, um, you know, were trying to help me to express the colostrum because um, she, because she'd been born by C-section, she'd um, not, they, basically what they told me is that they, um, when a baby is born by C-section, um, they tend to have a lot of mucus in their system. And um, while I was pregnant, she was hiccuping a lot. So I imagine that during the, the, that whole period, she was kind of um, taking in quite a lot of amniotic fluid with all the hiccups that she had. And she still has these hiccups now that, you know, she's, um, she's born. Um, and, you know, because the, she had so much amniotic fluid in her stomach, it was kind of keeping her full. So she didn't have that sort of urge to like, like to suckle or to nurse. And so you'll see the nurse trying to, you know, get her to wake up, you know, trying to, um, you know, uh, help her to you know, basically puke up this amniotic fluid that was in her stomach. And, you know, a lot of the amniotic fluid ended up coming out through the back passage because she had a lot of um, uh, meconium. And she, a lot of her nappies were, you know, filled with meconium for the first, like, day or so. Like, in fact, nearly two days she was pooing out meconium, uh, which is the very black substance that um, babies, um, that forms the baby's first poo. So um, they were really helpful and I can't really fault the care that I've um, experienced at all. And so they were helping me express colostrum into these syringes and, the, uh, and then feeding her um, the colostrum through the syringes. And they were really good in the sense that they um, also, you know, took her at night um, to look after her so that, you know, Ross and I could get some sleep. And again, because I hadn't really like fully appreciated or it hadn't fully sunk in that I was a mother and that, you know, she was my child, um, it just felt really weird. So like, so when they said, you know, would, would you like us to take her away, you know, so that we can look after her while you sleep? I was like, yeah, sure, take her away. You know, I'm, I'm quite happy for you to look after her completely, you know, yeah, just, just do it, you know, cause I'm just so exhausted. Um, and so we were there for two nights and both nights they took her 
um, and you know looked after her and only brought her to me when you know she needed to feed so I mean think about it now I would never do that because I'm so in love with her that I wouldn't like somebody saying okay I'll go and look after like my mum said I'm gonna take the baby into the next room and look after her while you sleep I would be like um no you're not separating me from my baby but at the time because it just hadn't sunk in it, I was just like yeah yeah sure yeah take her take her <laughs> you know um, uh, but you know I did appreciate them doing that anyway um, because it really just gave me um, time to just sort of um, I guess you know feel a bit I guess come into myself if that makes any sense and uh, during the whole time you know they were feeding us you know um, uh, food you know they're bringing us some um, basically silver service um, food you know so you could choose your own menu um, and they would make you whatever you wanted and the food was okay you know I didn't take any pictures of it because again as I said my mind just wasn't in that space to be taking pictures but um, they helped me with her first bath as well so um, you know it was it was interesting watching her because they said you know try and give her a bath so that she'll uh, sort of like wake up um, but <laughs> nothing was working and actually as a baby now she is very very sleepy and does not engage in any way shape or form besides just being hungry um, even when she's wet she doesn't cry um, she is just the most chill baby honestly she literally just wants to eat so I'm really fortunate um, but you know um, so far so good uh, yeah so I will I I'll let you meet her because she's grizzling at the moment so I'll, I'll go and get her and you meet her so here she is say hi hi sweetie say hi to everybody hi so here she is yeah i can't believe it <laughs> nine months and you're here and you're a whole month old today so well done on achieving that massive milestone um but yeah if you have any comments or questions then please leave them in the comment box and i'll try to reply and uh thumbs up this video and subscribe i'll see you later bye